Welcome to the All Star Planning Podcast. My name is Kelsey, and this is the place where I talk all things teacher lesson plans. Today, I am talking about delegating to your students. And let me tell you, it took me way too long to learn how to do this. Like, embarrassingly long, okay? Um, I think my first year, I did absolutely everything and really just like wanted the kids to sit and look like little statues. Part of the reason for that is because I, my first year, had 30 plus kids in every single class. I had five classes. I was very overwhelmed teaching three different curriculums, teaching chemistry in a retired art classroom. There was just a lot going on my first year to the point where I didn't want the kids interfering or doing anything less than perfect. I have learned that that is not the way it's done. Not only are teachers here to teach curriculum, but we are also here to teach about life. And um, we learn about life in a lot of different ways. So when people have human children at home, I only have a dog child, um, they make their kids do chores. And those chores are being done so that your kid will learn responsibility and respect and all kinds of things. And when a kid is doing chores, you would rather have them, at least, I'm not a parent, so just run with me here. <laughs> um, I would think that parents would want their kids to learn the skills more so than do the job perfectly. So you'd rather have your kid um, learn how to do the dishes and the importance of doing dishes and the process rather than having every single dish be 100% sparkling clean. You know what I mean? It's a learning process. So when the kid is learning how to fold laundry, um, you don't just say, oh, screw it, I'll do it all myself because when you fold it, it just comes out wrinkly. The kid is like five years old. They're not gonna be great at it right off the bat, but the only way they're gonna get better is with practice, right? And in doing this, the kid is learning responsibility and as they get older, they learn to care for their clothing better because they know that they're gonna be the ones responsible for washing it, right? Uh, in some cases, they may be the one responsible for paying for it, which is what happens when kids get older, like the teen years. So I have learned that delegating tasks to my students not only makes my life easier, but it teaches them a lot. So there are a few things that I have learned to delegate to my students. Um, and even if they're not done perfectly, it's okay. I can coach them on how to do it the way I like or um, we're just gonna leave it at B plus work and be okay with it because it's a school and um, kids destroy everything. <laughs> no matter what happens, there will always be a mark on the decoration that's hung up on the wall. The kids will write on it, bang into it, it'll get crinkled, it'll fall apart. Something's always gonna happen, right? In a school setting where there's more children than there are adults, the stuff in the building is going to quickly become destroyed. <laughs> I try to laminate as much as possible to, you know, cut down on my, um, my destruction <laughs> when I can, but I know that everything is going to wind up destroyed at some point or another. I have just learned to accept it. So some of the things I delegate is one cleaning. Um, prior to COVID, and all of the different cleaning protocols, I would have my kids help me clean the desktops. Once a week, I would switch it between my classes. So if I were teaching five sections, they would only clean the room once every five weeks. We would take just three to five minutes. I would hand everybody a Lysol wipe and I'd say, wipe down your desk, wipe down your chair, throw out the wipe, we're done. We would sanitize the room once a week. Um, I would do the light switch, the door handles, the pencil sharpener, some common things that everybody was touching, but they were responsible for their own little space. After COVID, every school has different rules on how things get sanitized, what materials are used, who is doing it. Um, so that protocol is a little bit different, I'm sure, for a lot of people now, but that's what I would do. Um, but my first year, I would sanitize the desks every single Friday before I left it got to be a little bit ridiculous. Um, so that is one thing that I delegate. 
The second thing is hanging decorations. Who would have thunk? Um, my, one of my years of teaching, I didn't have a full periodic table in my classroom. So I made uh, periodic table squares. I had the kids help me cut them out. I laminated them. They cut them out again because I am a cut, laminate, cut kind of person. Um, and then I had them put them in order. We got up, we hung them on the walls, whatever. I also had a Reedy Hall of Fame where I would just take little squares and I put the kids' names on it if they got mastery on the test. And in New York, mastery is considered an 85 or higher. So anytime a kid got mastery on a test, whether it was the first round or the retake, I would write their name on this little card. I would give the cards to the kids. Go hang these up in the hallway. Spread them out, make, because I made them in all different rainbow colors. So I would say spread them out. Don't make it look like a rainbow. Make it look like confetti where they're all over the place. The kids had a blast doing it. They were like plain. It took probably triple the amount of time that it would have taken me, but that was the kids' time. <laughs> the kids spent, if it would have taken me five minutes, it took them 15. But I got my five minutes back and they spent 15 minutes helping me out. So they got to be able to say to their classmates, oh, I helped Miss Reavy set up the Hall of Fame yesterday. They love helping. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it took me so long to realize, like, you as the kids. The kids want to help. They want to be helpful. Um, they want to contribute. This is their school as much as it is mine. And I have learned. Let them help. Let them help. Especially when it comes to decorating. I will certainly ask for help and have kids completely ignore me and, like, hide their face because they don't want to help. But most kids are willing to jump up and help right away. I love it. I love it. And then they're like my little special helpers and they get like a little Reavy high five. Sometimes I give extra credit to incentivize people to help me. And sometimes I do it after the fact just as a thank you. Sometimes I don't do it at all. There's no expectation of extra credit when the kids help me. Actually, funny story. I gave a kid extra credit for squashing a bug one time. <laughs> it was like very early in the school year and I was wearing my glitter Keds. I have no issue with bugs. I would have squished it myself, but I didn't want bugs on my cute shoes. So I had a kid do it and he got extra credit for it. So that was a memory. And it's just something that, you know, I'm sure many of you look back on your days at school as some of your favorite days. That's probably why you're teachers. I am one, I, I am a teacher who is certainly thinking about the memories kids are making in school. Um, I encourage them to take pictures in my classroom of them doing work or doing labs because it's fun and exciting and these things of them helping and the silly story of, oh, one time my teacher gave me extra credit because I squished a bug. That's something that's going to stick with this kid for years to come and it's just, I look back on high school fondly so I want to be able to do that for as many of my students as possible because I know not all people have that which is sad, it makes me so upset. High school was one of the best times of my whole life. I had a blast and I wanna make sure that my students are having a similar experience. Another thing that I delegate that I probably think most people are already doing is handing back papers. I will only let kids hand back papers that are not tests or quizzes. They can hand back vocabulary and labs and other like classwork things that I'll collect here and there. I absolutely believe that tests and quiz grades are something that's personal, especially in high school. Kids are very, uh, I don't want to say on the whole they're self-conscious, but it is some, there may just be one kid in the room who is self-conscious about their grades. I don't want to out them and just hold on to Sally's test every time. Hand out everybody's test but Sally's. That's silly and mean to me. So I hand out all of the tests. I always hand them folded and flipped upside down, which scares the kids because <laughs> they think that if I hand it back that way that they failed. It's not the case. It's just for privacy. But I think that those are private and everything else can be handed out by students. They love helping me. They love handing things out, especially um, we have to file our labs. So we have like lab filing days. I'll have like five or six kids hand back labs kids are filing them, they're putting them in order, recording them on the recording sheet. They love helping. And it's just, it's so sweet to have them help. And then I am not there spending the entire period handing back papers. I'm helping kids with filing. I am able to uh, 
take notes or make edits or write an email or there's so many other things that I can do when my kids are doing these very simple tasks that they are highly capable of which will help to teach them responsibility and respect and all of these other things, right? Um, another thing that I have students do is the seating chart. I used to spend hours making seating charts, no joke, hours. And then you have to like have your, <laughs> and then you have to have your roster with you because there'll be 25 kids in your class and then somehow you come up with only 24 on the seating chart and you're thinking, oh my goodness, who could I have possibly forgotten? And then you realize you wrote one kid's name twice, so you really left off two kids. It becomes a whole ordeal. So what I do, I print a roster, I give it to a kid, I give them an outline shape of the room. It's usually I made it in PowerPoint with just shapes of where the desks are. And I say, hey, figure this out. Figure it out. And usually the kid who's making the seating chart is the kid in that particular class. So if I needed a new seating chart for first period, I would have some kid in my first period class figure it out. I don't do seating charts anymore. One, I don't think that they are ridiculously important, at least for me. Most of my kids are paying attention anyway. And then two, the kid who gets the responsibility of making the seating chart is usually a kid who wants to learn and wants to not be distracted and wants the class to be focused. So they know better than me who's friends with who. I mean, I only see them a few minutes every single day. So they'll say, oh my goodness, these guys are neighbors. These two are going to be talking nonstop. Oh, these, these two used to date. They can't sit next to each other because they don't get along well. Um, this one and this one, they're cousins. And they're, they have like a secret language. They just talk to each other all day. Oh, this one's on her phone all the time. She should sit in the front of the room. The kids know better than me. <laughs> Plus, the kids love the power of making the seating chart. And anytime there's errors or mistakes on the seating chart or some kid is just completely unhappy, I move them. It's, it's honestly not that big of a deal to me. A lot of these things I'm type B about. Like, I'm definitely type A on paper, but with paper, <laughs> I'm a type B. So when it comes to my seating chart, for the most part, honestly, I don't even have a seating chart. I just tell the kids, sit wherever you're going to be successful. And then if I have issues with a particular kid or a particular class, that's when I start moving them around. It's not that important to me. The kids get really excited when they are the one chosen to make the seating chart. The next thing I delegate is teaching and review. I know, you're thinking I'm crazy right now. Something I delegate is actually my teaching, to an extent. I'm teaching 99.99% of the time, but when we are going over classwork or homework, I'll have a kid come up and I'll say, hey, do number five on the board. Show everybody how it's done. Explain to them what you did. And they'll do it. And the kids are usually very excited to do it. Um, I, When I send a kid up to the front of the room to teach or review, it's only ever for a minute or two at a time. And I tell the whole class, you have to call Bob Smith, you have to call him Mr. Smith because he is the teacher right now. And then I usually go and I sit in Bob's desk, like we switch spots, and Bob will get up there and he rolls his shoulders back, he stands up straight, and he'll explain to the whole class what's going on and how it's done. And he'll have <laughs> kids call out and he goes, no, raise your hand. It happens all the time. They love it, they think it's so much fun and I use it in a lot of different ways. I use it, one, so that the other 20-something kids in the class can learn the concept in a different way. So if we are learning bonding, for instance, I will teach it in the Miss Reeby way, and then I will have a student go up and Bob Smith will teach it in the Mr. Smith way. And the kids in the class, the other kids, will get an opportunity to learn the same stuff, but in a different way, in different language. And that I think is excellent because they're learning it in a different lens. Then number two, uh, Bob gets to feel special and important and showcase his work. And I get to see how my kids are doing. So if Bob represents the 
best and brightest chemistry students in the room, I can kind of get a glimpse at what those kids are thinking. If Bob represents, you know, the middle average kid, I can get a sense of what the middle average kid is thinking. If Bob represents the most struggling students in the class, I get to see what they think. So I don't understand the psychology of how and why this happens, but if Bob is in the front of the room and Bob's best friend in the whole world is Dave, and Dave doesn't talk all that much, Dave is a little more conservative in my room, if they're best friends and Bob is in the front of the room teaching, Dave all of a sudden will become the biggest chatterbox in the entire room and he will raise his hand so that his best friend Bob Smith will call on him. And I will get an opportunity to hear more of what Dave is thinking just because Bob is in the front of the room. Sometimes kids just don't want to talk to adults. Sometimes kids don't like you as much as they like their best friends. Sometimes uh, kids feel more safe when their best friend is in the front of the room. Again, I don't understand the psychology of it, but I love this trick. <laughs> I love it. I live for it. And then, in addition to that, the kid who gets called to the front of the room to be the teacher will sometimes be a kid who just needs a little extra attention. We all have those kids. One who just is maybe a little rambunctious, maybe they're a little naughty, maybe they just... Uh, I don't, I don't know why kids do the things that they do, but <laughs> I do know that on occasions you will have kids who just need a little attention and sometimes they get that attention from negative behavior. By you having this kid go to the front of the room and get a positive spotlight can change everything. I'm telling you, that kid gets the attention that they need, they are learning, they're not causing problems, there's so much good that comes out of it. Give it a shot. Give it a shot, see what happens. Take your little troublemaker, attention-seeking kid, give them an opportunity, give them a positive spotlight, and watch what happens. I can almost guarantee that you will not regret it. So I just wanna remind you that done is better than perfect. I would rather have my Hall of Fame just stuck outside, even if I don't love it, it's stuck outside and the kids get to say that they contributed. I can have a kid go up to the front of the room and teach the class and even if they make a mistake I can jump in and say oh you know what Bob made a very common mistake here can anybody jump in and help Mr. Smith with this very common mistake so there are plenty of things that we can be delegating to our students to make our lives easier some of those things are as simple as handing back papers and some of those things are as intricate as having a kid teach your class or teach an example to everyone in the room and those things not only have an opportunity to teach them your content but also have an opportunity to teach the kids respect and responsibility please let me know what you delegate to your students either as a youtube comment on this video or on instagram my handle is kelsey Reeby. please also make sure to subscribe to the podcast new episodes come out every tuesday and if you haven't already please sign up for the all-star planning introductory masterclass where I show you the five pieces of the all-star planning curriculum, how they fit together to get you back some time on your lesson planning so that you can create fun activities and just sit and brainstorm ways to delegate tasks to your students. That is all I have for you. Have an excellent day and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.